Hi, this is problem six from chapter 19. So here we have a 50 kilogram cylinder, it's an angular velocity of 30 radians per sec, and it's brought into contact. So you can imagine that this is spinning, right? And this is a little bit high, and then it gets in contact with surface C. And between that disk or cylinder and the surface, there is a kinetic coefficient of friction of 0 0.2. And we are being asked, how long will that spin till it stop, right? What is the time till it stop? And they are asking also the force that this massless, massless link or weightless link is doing respect to that cylinder. We do our free body diagram of our disk. And what forces do we have? Of course, we never forget the weight, right? Let me draw it with another color. So we have a weight over here. Since that is uh, 50 kilograms, the weight is always mass times gravity. And then what else do we have? We have that reaction force right here of that weightless link. Let's call it reaction AB. And we could actually get two reactions A in X and Y because we have a pin. But since we know that this is a weightless link, we know that those two reactions will be related by this angle 20 over here. So we know that this, since this is a 20 degrees angle, that will be also a 20 degree angle. Then what do we have in our surface? We have in our force for surface, of course, the normal force in the point of contact, and we have a friction force. Since this is spinning in that direction, so the relative velocity between those two points, so this point has a linear velocity in this direction, and this is a steady surface. Therefore, the friction force, it opposes to our motion. Therefore, the friction force is in this direction. So this is our free body diagram. Now we have to decide which approach we like to use, right? So we have three possible approaches. We want to, if we use the approach of forces equals to mass and acceleration, which is a, a our equations of motion, we will relate acceleration. But here in this uh, uh, problem, we are being asked to relate those forces respect to time. That's why the best approach is to use already the integration respect to time of that equation of motion, which is the principle of linear momentum and the principle of angular momentum. We still like to do the kinetic diagram since we are using the principle of linear momentum and angular momentum, we will write our kinetic diagram in terms of velocity, not in terms of acceleration, right? So as we see here, since this point is steady, we have that the velocities or the acceleration in x direction is equal to zero, and the velocity in y direction is also equal to zero. So in this case, we only have angular velocity. So we only will have angular momentum. So let us apply our principle linear and angular momentum. And with that, I will have three equations, right? So my uh, principle, linear and angular momentum, means that the impulse, right, which is the injury of the force respect to time, will be the difference between the linear momentum, the, all the forces, right, that I have in one direction. So let's do all the forces in x direction will be my mass of the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Since we are not moving, the point O is not moving, both of them are equal to zero. So in this case, what we will have is that if we add forces in x direction, we will have the reaction AB cosine of 20 a negative plus the friction force here we have an integral respect to time, so that will be equals to 
if we are integrate that, respect to time will give me a times times, but the time is a, what we want to find, but this has to be equals to zero because this is not zero. Therefore, our first equation will be equals to the reaction cosine of 2n, and in this case, we are saying that those two surfaces re move relative to each other. So in this case, we this is not a gear, this is a cylinder that has a friction, and we have a relative motion between the two of them. Therefore, we can relate the friction force with the normal force as the kinetic coefficient of friction times the normal force, and that's equals to zero. And so that will be my first equation. Notice that this equation will be the same one as use equation of motion because I don't have acceleration of the point O either. If I do the same thing but for a y direction, you see that this is equal to zero as well. Therefore, I have my forces in y direction. In y direction, I have the weight negative, my normal force positive, and my reaction sine of 20. And all that multiplied by time equals zero. Since time is not equal to zero because it's the variable that we want to find, this that is in the parentheses has to be equal to zero. Therefore, my second equation will be the weight, which is known. Let's write it over there. So it's 50 times 9.81 plus the normal force multiplied by FB sine of 20 equals zero. So in this case, we already have two equations, and actually with two unknowns. So with these two equations, we would be able to find the normal force and the reaction of the weightless link AB. Let's do our third equation, and then I will give you the uh, results for those three variables. Right, so, and my third equation will be the moment respect to that point O, right, respect to time, and that will be equals not to the difference, the change in linear momentum, by the change in angular momentum, right? Okay, so in this case, we have initial angular momentum because we have an initial angular velocity, but we don't have any final angular momentum because it the time that it requires to stop spinning. Therefore, the final angular momentum is equal to zero. Which are the forces that produce uh, that are that produce moment respect to that point? It's actually only the friction force. Therefore, I have the friction force times the radius, which is 0 0.2 times time, right? Because I am integrated that moment respect to time will be equals to my inertia, which is inertia respect to O, and my angular velocity is negative. Okay, so from here, remember that my friction force is related to the normal force because I have a displacement of those two points will be equals to mu times N, 0 0.2 times equals to the inertia. The inertia of a disk is one half mass times radius squared. So that will be one half uh, 50 times the 0 0.2 square. So we have that value over here, which is then 25. These two negative cancel out, right? And then I have 0 0.2 square. It's an angular velocity of 30 radians. And having already the normal that I found with these two equations, I will be able to find time. So I will write the solution right here. So solving, solving. Let me write this in my third equation. Solving one, two, and three. And the equations is the variables that I want to find is the reaction, the normal force, and time. 
and I can write here the results and I have that the normal force is equals to 457.2 newtons the reaction AB is equals to 97.3 newtons and time is 1.64 seconds. Those are my three values. Remember that the first two, I found them with those two equations. So I solved this system of equations and then I plug in the normal force in this third equation because we know the coefficient of friction, which is 0 0.2, into that equation and we were able to find the time.